Hey, hello everyone. This is Mark Joshua again. Um, this is uh, you're watching my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I, I just want to ask you to join me on my journey on, and on your journey of being transfigured into the image of Jesus Christ by the Lord who is the Spirit. So it's all by living with the Holy Spirit, communion with the Holy Spirit, friendship with the Holy Spirit. And that's what my YouTube channel is about, um, basically. So I'm, I'm so glad that you're watching right now. Uh, if you like this video, uh, thumbs up, please. And um, I just want to share something about uh, outreach. You know, I, uh, I always say that life is an outreach. And um, uh, in, when Jesus said to Peter, uh, now I will make you a fisher of men, is that he he went from an occupation of of, of feeding himself to a, a occupation or a calling of feeding uh, people uh, and actually feeding the Lord uh, because he is pleased with if we work for him if we the Bible says in Proverbs 11 verse 30 uh, that those who are um, wise win souls and it means that uh, you you gather treasures in heaven, right? So that's amazing. And uh, Peter, so Jesus said to Peter, now I will make you a fisher of men. And uh, so we're all uh, called to be fisher of men. And some people are still in their rowing boat. Some people have a, have a, um, are, are just, are, they are just learning how to do this. Or maybe you have a, a professional fisher's boat already. Uh -huh. But I remember when the Lord called me to have a, um, like a, a ministry in the sense that it will that it will be uh, like more like tangible uh, something I do. Um, so with, with a foundation, starting a foundation, everything. Uh, I believe everyone has a ministry already as a Christian. So we don't think like, oh no, if I do f when I go into full time ministry, then I do I would do this and this and this. No, it's the moment you meet Jesus, the moment you uh, accept Him as your Lord and Savior, you're called to be a fisher of men. You're called to make disciples. You're called to walk with Jesus, follow Jesus in His ways. And so that happens immediately. Um, so I believe every Christian is in, in full-time ministry. But I remember me when I went to this uh, transition of... Um, uh, having a business and uh, letting that go for the Lord because he asked me to let that go uh, going into a, a workplace and working with refugees and homeless people uh, I remember the Holy Spirit uh, being my teacher in uh, 1 John 2 verse 27 is, is one of my favorite scriptures where it says that the anointing that's in you you're not in need of anyone to teach you but the anointing that's in you let him teach you everything uh, so remain one in him and that's that says something about your friendship um, abiding in Jesus in John 15 but also your communion with the Holy Spirit and that the anointing will teach you everything and um, so that's the thing where where he wants to carry you to he wants to carry you to the point that you see God's heart for the lost and I always say this that um, uh, I'm called to save the lost and edify the saints and um, we're all call, called to do this right so um, I remember in a transition in my life uh, I saw in the spirit I saw that I was still having a rowing boat but the Lord wants to give me more and more equipment to do it or more uh, he gave me a certain stewardship over it for how I, how I handle his works and the things he gave me. And this is very biblical because you know about the talents in the Bible, that certain people had so many talents and other other person that many talents and some multiplied it, but some buried it under the ground. We all need to multiply our talents, uh, meaning the things we have been given by God. And what God has given us is the stewardship over uh, uh, actually hosting his presence uh, stewardship over um, the gifts the spiritual gifts we have in the in, in, in the of the Holy Spirit but also our calling working out our salvation that's our stewardship so I remember uh, the Holy Spirit telling me to uh, approach three at least three people per day and tell them about Jesus 
and uh, that was uh, uh, something out of my comfort zone but the whole thing is what I learned is the whole Christian life is out of your comfort zone it's the whole Christian life starts when Peter had to go out of the boat and walk on the water and focus on Jesus and that's the super supernatural life we're all called to have the supernatural life life in the Holy Spirit and um, so um, but the moment he was focused on himself he started to drown right and then he focused on Jesus again and then he started to walk on the water again we're all called to live that life so a life of the Holy Spirit him teaching you everything him discipling you the Holy Spirit discipling you because the Holy Spirit is the substitute of Jesus here on earth so he's discipling us right now so we need to get to know him as a person and as a friend the Holy Spirit that's why Paul says that he prays for the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit for all of us and um, for that church he was uh, writing that letter to so and um, and so I did that I, I, I approached three people at least three people per day and it was out of my comfort zone and that's when you get to know the comforter more you know the comforter he he comforts you that's the Holy Spirit the comforter he comforts you in your hard times and hardships and trials and tribulations but he, you will also get to know him as a true comforter when you step out of your comfort zone. And then you see that he will guide you. He will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. So I did that and I remembered um, being a good steward over the, uh, the three people per day. And then the Lord giving me more and more. But also uh, walking on the street and just getting a word of knowledge for a guy. And uh, I remember uh, seeing that he has a that he had asthma. It was correct. I prayed for him. He felt something. He felt the Holy Spirit touching him. These kind of things happened more and more and more. And then it became a lifestyle. So I remember uh, my wife and I going to a, to a restaurant for our anniversary. And then at that restaurant, just receiving words of knowledge for people that were sitting around us, uh, seeing people that, that had things with their knees. And I remember uh, people that were sitting at the table, they all had injuries in their knees, but the, that's what the Holy Spirit told me. And then uh, my wife, Gita, she was like, man, not again, because I have that all the time. So it became a lifestyle. And uh, of course, now my wife is used to this and she uh, is also uh, reaching out more and more. So it, bec it becomes a lifestyle. So outreach, life is an outreach. And uh, um, outreach is, is, is what we're all called to do. It's not a church program. Some people think, okay, we have uh, uh, outreach once per month and then they go on the streets or they have an event. But it's a lifestyle. So you have it every day of your life. You can have this outreach and that's why I always emphasize of going back to the church of Acts that we need to go there back there because you know the apostles and even the deacons and the people that were helping in in church uh, they were church first of all and they all were led by the Holy Spirit and that's what we need to have that lifestyle of every day being led by the Holy Spirit being fed and led by the Holy Spirit and that's so amazing because then you see a lifestyle of having outreach and I just wanted to share this of um, don't be too focused on results uh, a lot of Christians when they go out there they, they want to have a lot of numbers of people they they brought to Jesus but sometimes it's really from the flesh and you work it up and you feel like a striving but I see I carry more fruit of being listening to the Holy Spirit listening to God's voice and then obeying and then doing that and then you see that it, it, it will happen so easily you know um, also what Paul says some sow I sowed uh, some watered and some some reaped right so there's a sowing a, a, a watering and a reaping um, don't underestimate the sowing I remember me being a, a young man uh, I was I think I was seven or eight years old I lived in Aruba uh, at that time and I was going through a hard time I, I remember my my parents getting a divorce and I was feeling depressed and um, there was this um, teacher of mine she came to me and she said Jesus loves you and I went to a prostitute prostitut, pro Protestant church at that time but it never I was never like a true believer yet or born-again believer uh, but it became so personal so I never heard the reverend say something like Jesus loves you 
and she said that and it became so personal that Jesus loves me you know and I never forget that so there was a seed that was sown in me and it had it came to flourishing uh, to flourishment uh, so it, it, it flourished and so a seed will always flourish when you plant a seed or it will be stolen by the enemy or by the cares of the world what the Bible says but uh, there is a, a great um, the Lord uh, wants those people saved more than we do often and uh, so he will take care of that seed um, uh, so uh, what I what I have seen is that the, the words Jesus loves you is so very 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 powerful um, it, it, it Jesus so it emphasized Jesus the Son of God the Lord our Lord and Savior the Messiah so it emphasizes that love is that he still lives because it's an active verb so he he lives and he loves you so he so that, that means that he uh, he takes care of you and he loves you and you makes it very personal that he loves you so that's making it personal so never underestimate saying Jesus loves you to people um, also what I want to say is that uh, I remember in my life um, uh, I think the moment I became a Christian, I started to evangelize. And uh, everyone is called to do the work of an evangelist. And But I remember be, working at a marketing company and uh, I felt the Holy Spirit prompting my, me to share the gospel with everyone there. I did that and some people hated me for it. Uh, but I remember one guy, he was an alcoholic, and he told me, shut up Mark, I don't want to hear it all the time. But the, Holy Spirit keep on prompting me he kept on prompting me uh, to share the gospel with that guy and share the love of God and I did that and then uh, years later uh, he sent me a message uh, an email with a uh, with, with that he said mark I'm so thankful that you always shared the gospel with me I became a Christian I, rem I met a Christian girlfriend and I became a Christian so I'm so thankful for you being obedient to God at that time and so never underestimate the sowing and also the obedience to the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest, what the Bible says. As the Lord of the harvest for more laborers, the, the laborers are cast into the harvest fields. He is the Lord of the harvest. And He knows exactly how to evangelize. So He's the best evangelist here on earth right now. So we need to work together with the Holy Spirit more and more for evangelism. And um, also, it's the powerful thing is the more you do it, the more heart you get for it. I also know that if I don't do it, I see that our ministries is just like there's less power or there's less edge to it. It becomes, you know, you see God's heart. This is God's heartbeat to win the lost. If you do it, you can see your ministries flourish. You can see everything flourish in your life. But you also feel fulfilled. It's it's amazing to do this. Uh, my wife, the, she she led. Um, she let someone, uh, she had a pedicure for, and uh, she led that lady to the Lord. So, 